Hey coaches, welcome back. Season 2, episode 12, Football Talk with Coach Chip. We're going to carry over from episode 11. I know my card at the beginning of episode 11 said episode 10. My bad, I'll go back and edit it. If you see this and it says episode 11, no, I've already fixed it. Go back and look at it. We looked at coupling RPOs with the buck. The pulling guards make all the difference. This episode, we're going to deal with coupling RPOs with the buck sweep out of trips. Don't forget our sponsors, Johnny's New York Style Pizza in beautiful and historic downtown West Point, and also Wright Equipment out of Birmingham, Alabama. They set up weight rooms all over the country. I know as far west as Utah, up and down the East Coast, and they dominate the Gulf South high schools, especially in the state of Alabama, with Wright Equipment. Train the right way. Let's get started. Okay, this diagram here, you see we're in a trips formation. All right, trips right. We're still blocking buck. You have to go back. I'll tag it. Look at season one to see our uh, how we block the buck without an attached tight end, or you can, I guess you could say that H right there is an attached tight end, and just see how we block it. We're, this is not what this uh, episode is about. It's about RPOs off the buck and show you some ways that you can loosen up that box. All right, now this particular play here, we are running the buck and our trigger, our key is right here. It is the outside backer to the play side and the strong side. And you know, on yesterday we were looking at the back side, inside linebacker, our last episode we were. Now on this particular version of the buck, we're gonna trigger as I said, the strong side or play side outside linebacker. You still got your glance, but this time the glance is coming from number one. All right, you can coach it any way you want to. Uh, I showed you a video, of, and I'm going to show you some of our video today, just a few uh, clips of a high school team actually doing this, and also the one we talked about in episode 11, the two-by-two two buck, and reading the backside wheel, a high school team actually doing it. And, uh, but on this one, we're going to put that outside foot back and we're going to cut on the third step. Now the angle is totally optional and it's up to the back or the receiver. Okay. He can break that thing off right in here. Like this. Okay. And if he's, because he's got his eyes inside, and he's going to see what the defense is doing. And of course, he's going to grass, which you, all you spread guys understand that, you know, running to grass. And that's what you teach him. Now, the reason I teach outside foot back is because so many of our end cuts are on the third or the fifth step or the seventh step or whatever. And uh, of course, you know, if you do it that way, I suggest you do it the same way every time, every how you want to do it. But I do the, ins the inside foot up, outside foot back. In cuts are on the odd. Out cuts are on the even. Okay? And then your number two is going to run the speed out. Okay? And again, ever how you want to do it, if you got inside foot back, you may want to do the out cut on the fourth step because the out cut will come on. Excuse me, if you got the outside foot back, you're going to, on the fourth or the sixth step, you'll make the out cut. And so the timing is there. All right, and this is very similar to one I showed you uh, in the previous episode, Ohio State doing the, the speed out. But this is awesome on the goal line. It's a great two-point conversion play, and that's what I'll show you some video of. And I'm really drawing a brain cramp on whether that was just a touchdown inside the five or it was a two-point conversion. I really can't remember. But I'll show that to you in a little bit. This exact play right here where we're blocking Buck. And you're going to see nobody's downfield, partially because it was short yardage and the defense was storming the gates. And uh, so nobody could go downfield, even if they'd wanted to. Now, this one is just like the others from episode 11 with a pre-snap quick back over here. If you got the quarterback that can chunk it out there, and if they're going to play off and not give you leverage out here they're going to give you the leverage then boom that's leverage guys he's off the line 
He's inside taking away your counter off the buck. And so you got to make him be honest by showing them you'll throw that joker. Make him get out there and guard space to prevent this from happening. Okay? Especially if you got a decent athlete out there, you can just zoom it out there to him. And even if that cornerback's a great open field tackler, that outside backer's way in here. Okay, we're one-on-one. -on -one. Great open field tackle. If he's playing off eight yards, you execute that thing properly, you're going to get four or five yards. And again, buck sweep is not a third and eight play. So if you're calling buck, you know, you're looking at first and ten, second and six, or whatever. It's that kind of play. It's a run play. And remember, you call it like a run play. You don't call it like a pass play. Now, I know some coaches have philosophy. They call it like a, a run play. Some call it like a quick game. Run the RPOs on downs, you would throw quick game. Well, to me, quick game is something you do on a run situation. You don't throw quick game necessarily on third and eight. I, don't, I wouldn't think so. But this is how we do it right here. Just like this. You got to speed out here. Quarterback's reading this backer. If this backer comes up to play the buck, you've got this, okay? Also, you've got this. It's a natural rub. It's a natural rub. Now, what you really got, if this guy is out here playing over the top, okay, man for man, and you run that speed out and he goes with him, then you've got the buck all day. Okay, and it depends on what you want to do. You may have the kind of quarterback where you tell him if he chases and gives you that window, throw it in the window. But I'm going to tell you now, you got the buck because teach that guard, that front side guard's coming to kick. If there's nobody to kick, we always taught our guys, you turn up. Now you got two guys turning up, and if you give it, you block everything on the inside. Backside backer seals off, backside guard seals off the inside. Front side guards leading on to safety. You may have the band play. So there's a real simple RPO off buck action. Now, if you're not a buck team, you're an outside zone team, I highly recommend doing this pin and pull. Pin and pull. All right, again, because the guards make all the difference. The guards are going to make these linebackers move. They, these guys are going to be triggering these linebackers. Okay? All right, let's look at another one. All right, again, this is the same formation. Again, you've got your pre-snap quick if you've got leverage over here. If this guy's in here, and it just depends on what your style is. You know, you got a quarterback that can sling that joker out there. You tell him, say, hey, if it's there, if you've got leverage, and again, uh, look down below and find the link to our episode on leverage. Teach your quarterback about leverage if you're going to throw quick game or RPOs. And you're going to make them, and you say, but I want to run the ball, Coach Chip. Great. Okay, take a page from another Chip, Chip Kelly. And you do things to give you a box that you want. When you demonstrate to the defense that you are going to throw that joker out here, if they don't do something, they're either going to have to bring this guy up. Now, I'm going to tell you, if they start out with him back at eight, there's a reason for that. He's not a bump and run corner. You make them do that, you're making them do something they don't like to do. All right. But what you really want to happen is for them to say, all right, our corner's not good enough to get up here in the face like this. So I'm going to leave him back here and I'm going to take away that quick with this guy. All right. Now that gives you a better box to run, run the ball. You got your counter off your buck action. You got Q counter. You got the wing back coming back counter. There's all kinds of things you've got. And so what you want to do is make them give you the box you want. This is not about chuck and duck, okay? This is about using the passing game, the RPOs, the quick game, whatever you want to call it, to give you the box that you want to run against, making the box doable for your line. And that's why you do it. You don't do it because you're wide open. We're not talking about being leech here. We're talking about you want to run the football. Great. So do I. But it's hard to do that nowadays when you've got teams loading up on you, wanting to hit you in the head. But if you demonstrate to them, you will throw the football. And you, will, and you don't have to throw it down the field. You don't have to be the Rams of 20, 30 years ago with, um, with God, dang it, the guy that bagged groceries. But anyway, 
you know what I'm talking about. You don't have to have a great vertical passing game to make defenses respect your passing game. Use the quick game. All right, now this one here, and I'm going to show you when it's not the same as this diagram, but it's very similar to this in that you got guys going vertical. Now, especially against zone. Now, here's what you do. you got a mandatory outside release by number one. You want to make this corner flip his hips. Make the corner flip his hips and face the sideline. Get him to turn his back on number two. So you're going to release outside. I call that a more, M-O-R-E, mandatory outside release. Boom, right there. So he turns and runs with him. Okay? All right, now. Here's your read. Still, it's the same read. You notice now in episode 11 and in this episode 12, I've shown you only two reads, reading the backside inside linebacker and reading the front side outside linebacker. That's the only two reads. And you don't do them on the same play. Okay? You know, you have different calls, and you do as much as you think you can do, as much as your quarterback can handle. Okay, you can have like a buck – at a two-by-two, two, like I showed you in episode 11, a buck out of trips, like I'm showing you here. And then you can have tags. All you do is rep it up in practice where you can tag the different RPOs. So this one here, you have two verticals. Now, we're not talking about chucking that thing all the way down the field. Okay, we're talking about throwing it right here in this window. Now, you want this guy to release out, okay, and get in the seam between the free and the corner, and the corner is no low contendere. He's not in the picture. That's Latin for no contest, baby. He's out of the picture. And so this guy, right, so what he's got to do, and it may be him have to release out here, knowing the corner is going to flip his hips and run. This guy's got to make a believer out of him, okay? And in practice, every now and then have your quarterback chuck it downfield, to this guy, just to make that number one thing. Hey, if I'm going to run this thing full speed, they're going to throw it to me if I, if I burn this guy. So go ahead and chuck it down there to him. But here's what you do. Get an outside release right here, getting distance from the safety, and tell your receiver, you got to give them freedom. We talked in the last episode, 11, about giving the quarterback freedom. Give the receiver freedom to adjust his route. You don't want to make them, you know, slaves to the pattern. they got to run to space, run to grass, get open, okay? especially on these RPOs, because the quarterback is not reading the route. He's reading this guy from the time the ball is snapped. Remember, the back is in charge of the mesh. He's got a chance to run it. He'll get it right. If he knows he ain't getting it, if he don't do right, he'll, he'll figure it out. All right, you got to practice it. And right here, this guy comes up to play the buck. There's your window right there. It's all day, every day, twice on Sunday. Right, if this guy is playing out here on the head of your number two and he turns and runs, look what you got. You got nobody to kick. This joker's going to turn up now. This joker's going to turn up and go get safety. Okay? You got a football play. You got a line that's going to block on the inside. Now, all this is predicated. Now, you got to be able to block the buck. This isn't a substitute for buck or substitute for having a line that can't block. You got it because it all begins with the running play because that's why you're doing it. You want to run the football. So now here's what happens. They come out there and they apex this joker from jump street. Okay, you start throwing this right here or some of those others. They're going to have to do something. You know, death by a million pinpricks. Pin and once they get him out of the box, now look what you got. You're running buck with no force player if he's playing pass. But you got to demonstrate a willingness to throw it. And again, it's not a deep ball. You're in the window here. Okay? All right, let's look at a couple of videos, a couple of cut-ups. Okay, now this play here is the one we just talked about, the first one. All right, this is trips. There's your H or whatever you want to call him in your offense. He's going to block down. You're going to block buck sweep. Okay? Now over here, you're going to have the glance or slant right there by number one and number two running the speed out. Now, what I tell him in this situation here, and again, this is a touchdown because the ball's just inside the five. It's not on the three. On this situation here, I tell this guy he needs to get in the end zone. 
So he needs to adjust his route because we, we run it so much as a two-point conversion play. Okay? And look at the natural rub you're going to get. Watch this. Boom. That wasn't a pick. That was not a pick. Okay? Or, you know, an illegal screen. They're just running their routes because he really, number one, really is running a route. Number two did a great job of getting up the field and making him think he was getting vertical. Watch this. Boom. Got in the end zone. All right, they outnumbered us on the backside. Watch. Quarterback did a great job of seeing that pre-snap. Watch. When he makes his fake, he's going to adjust away from pressure. Held on to it too long, but it's because of the pressure and he had to get away from it. Because the backside tackle did get his B gap. He had to gap flip it. See down here? And they had a guy coming off the edge. But it still works. By the way, for those who say, my quarterback can't do this. This kid right here, this is the second game of his junior year. He had played, honest to God, in the first football game and two the previous year as a JV quarterback under center in the wing team. So don't tell me your quarterback can't throw this ball. Okay? That's not that long a chunk. Now, if you can't, you can't throw the ball at all. So don't come out throwing the football. And then tell me you can't do this when you can do other passes. Okay, on this one, we're two by two, but you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, this is coaching right here. Uh, this is a screw up. We believed, I tagged a sluggo where he kind of do a slant and go, and he really didn't do much of a sluggo. He kind of just took off. But imagine, if you will, if this guy over here does a more, him turning his back, him releasing out instead of doing a sluggo, releasing out and getting in that crease right there. Okay? Now, this kid here carried him. So the quarterback overthrew it, but we didn't get to hit it in the window because this outside backer, you know, the defensive coaches hit him every now and then too. Okay, so you're blocking Buck. Boop. And he had a really tight window to get it into. But now y'all said quarterback looked at me like, what the crap? You know, hey, coach. You know, sometimes they get a call too. They hit, they hit it just right. But y'all get an idea of what I'm talking about, okay? But this team, their D coordinator was bound and determined to take away our RPO game, which was fine because we ran crazy. We ran for quite a bit that night. Okay. Now I want to show you some more from the uh, plays we talked about in episode 11. All right now, here you've got a high school team running the exact plays. Had somebody hit me up and said, well, you know, that's Alabama and Ohio State doing it, the best two teams in the country, best two programs in the country, them and them two and Clemson year in and year out. But this is a high school team. As I told you, the quarterback, this is his second, fourth game he ever played in. And the first two were JV games, his sophomore year, under center wing tee. This is his second game running this offense. All right, y'all watch. This is where he's going to get a glance here, okay, and a, uh, under here. And he's reading this kid right here. Right there, that's the read. That's against a pretty good football team, too. This is a couple of years removed from the state championship. All right, here we go again. We start out in empty. Didn't really have much of an effect on them. This is a well-coached football team, too, in the dark red. Okay, that's it. Season 2, Episode 11. Football talk with Coach Chip. Coupling RPOs with the buck. Pull the guards, make all the difference. Really, it's episode 12. Excuse me for that right there. It's episode 12. Don't forget our sponsors, Johnny's New York Style Pizza in West Point, Georgia, and Right Equipment. I'm thinking Johnny's and train the right way. Until next time, y'all be elite.